Cobb TV. Watch your life make sense. Welcome to Kabbalah Revealed. I'm Tony Kozenek. In this lesson, we're going to look closely at a Kabbalistic article, something that we looked at uh, a few lessons ago, but we're going to look at it in more detail. It's an article called, There's None Else Beside Him. This article comes from a book called Shemati. Shemati means, I have heard. And these articles, were lessons spoken by Bala Salam to his students. And his son, uh, Rabash, uh, Rav Baruch Shalom Halevi Ashlag, was one of his students. And he wrote what his father said. And he kept it in a, in a little personal notebook. And it was something, this notebook was something that he kept with him all the time. He had a, a few uh, books that he constantly referred to, and this, the directions, the instructions, and the, the words of his father, he kept close to him. Rav uh, Michael Leitman, who is my teacher and the teacher of uh, B'nai Baruch, uh, was Rav Baruch's personal assistant. He took care of all of his, uh, his affairs and was with him all the time. And he was his direct disciple. And at the time, towards the end of, uh, of Rav Baruch's life, uh, Rav Leitman was with him. He was with him in the hospital. He was with him during that process. And during the time that he had studied with him, Rabash had shown him many texts that he hadn't seen before and that hadn't been shared with uh, some of the other students. And Rav was aware of this notebook uh, and he had, he had seen it and had uh, borrowed it occasionally to, to learn from and so on and it was a very precious uh, thing. And when Rabash was on his deathbed, he gave this book to Rav Leitman. And uh, Michael Lightman published the book. And it contains beautiful uh, articles describing the inner work of a person. A lot of the, the work in Kabbalah is technical work. The study of, uh, of the Ten Sephirot, Talmud Esser Sephirot, and other technical works, the Tree of Life, um, uh, the Zohar which deal with the technical aspects of creation as well as the inner states related to them. Well, these articles in the book Shamadi, uh, they're specifically made for the student to, to find himself, uh, to identify inner states and to connect these inner states to the, to the technical work and the Kabbalistic work as a whole. And they contain thought from the highest level of reality. This particular article, There's None Else Beside Him, 
it encapsulates the entire methodology of Kabbalah. There isn't anything that a person need do or know or consider that's not in this article. And uh, Rabash told Rav Lightman that uh, it would be a good thing if he read this hundreds of times. Uh, we'll read it once today, perhaps, if we can get through it. And uh, as we do, again, we're doing this only to attract upper light. And all that you need do as we go through this is to try to connect with the thought and the feeling of the author. There is none else beside him. It is written that there is none else beside him, meaning that there is no other power in the world with the ability to do anything against him. And what man sees, namely that there are things in the world which deny the household of above, is because he wills it so. In other words, there's one power, there is one active force, there is one actor in reality. And there is no other uh, authority, there is no other author to anything that occurs in reality. But the fact that we see that the world is built in such a way that there seems to be an opposing force, well, this is done on purpose. And it's for our benefit. And it needs to be harnessed. It needs to be understood. And it needs to be included in our perception. And it is deemed a correction called the left rejects and the right adducts, meaning that which the left rejects is considered correction. This means that there are things in the world which from the beginning aim to divert a person from the right way, and they reject them from holiness. The hiddenness of the Creator is not a physical hiddenness. We feel perhaps He's not there, or maybe I believe in Him, but the proof for it we don't truly claim that if, if we saw him stand before us, we already know this. We know that we're not speaking about a physical proof, a physical reality. The hiddenness of the Creator is hidden not just from our physical senses. It's, he is hidden from our inner sensation, our feeling of connection, our, our faith, our direct sensation in our thoughts. It's, he is hidden from us by our doubts. Right? There's a quality of, of our inner state that when we are filled with doubt, then there is a rejection. That is, there's a hiddenness. We feel that it can't be so and that there is perhaps some other force. It's this sensation, this inner state of hiddenness where the reason for things, or to feel that there could be any kind of a divine guidance behind anything, uh, our doubt covers it completely. This is the hiddenness of the Creator, and this is uh, His method of teaching us and bringing us along. This means that there are things in the world which from the beginning aim to divert a person from the right way, and they reject Him from holiness. It's built that way. It's part of the design this hiddenness of the Creator and the evolution towards the desire to perceive the Creator. And the benefit from these rejections is that through them a person receives a need and a complete desire for God to help him. Since he sees it otherwise, he is lost. This need is actually what Kabbalah defines as prayer. To a Kabbalist, prayer is not words spoken. Uh, there, it's not something of the mouth. It's not the repetition of things, words and ideas uh, in a prayer book. It is a gut level need. It's something that has occurred in a person's desire uh, for which there can be no other answer but the thing desired for. And the hiddenness of the Creator and this action of the right and the left hand purposely create a need specifically for the closeness to the Creator. That is, for doubts to be removed, 
for us to rise above the aspect of our nature that engenders these doubts. Um, and that's the benefit. This is called uh, a, a correction, this development of this desire. And what is it that happens? How is this benefit felt for a person? Um, he's, not only does he not progress in the work, this is how he feels, but he sees that he regresses and he lacks the strength to observe Torah and mitzvot even if not for her name. So we know that the goal is to be able to be like the Creator, to create an inner similarity of form, of, of intention towards the Creator, which would be to bestow without thought of self, without that, that need, to be completely in bestowal, which is called for her sake or lishma. But a person can't even come close to that, so that the, the sensation that is teaching them and, and evolving them and building the need is a sensation that they can't even do this work even if not for her name. That is, even for themselves they can't do it. The, the rejection and doubt is, is so uh, complete and it's part of the process. It happens. It is one hand and then the next hand. One hand and the next. When this happens to a person, it's not, it's not happening because there's something wrong with the person. It's happening because it's in the system and it's built that way. That only by genuinely overcoming all the obstacles above reason, he can observe Torah and mitzvot. So this is the thing that's built for a person. That it's not possible by dealing with, with their a doubt, and then with some kind of a filling, a delight at feeling close, these two variations always produce a hiddenness, a sensation of hiddenness, and that the only way that a person can proceed to actually observe Torah and mitzvot, that is to become like the Creator, draw close and bond with the Creator, is above that level, above reason. But he doesn't always have the strength to overcome above reason that otherwise he is forced to deviate, God forbid, from the way of the Creator, and even from not for her name. And he, who always feels that the shattered is greater than the whole, meaning that there are a lot more descents than ascents, and he doesn't see an end to these predicaments, and he will forever remain outside of holiness, for he sees that it's difficult for him to observe even as little as a jot, unless through overcoming above reason, but he is not always able to overcome, and what shall be the end of it? This is the extent of the, the hiddenness and the need that it evokes in a person. It comes to an extreme expression, that is, the more that a person wants this, the more they truly desire this, the more it appears that they're pushed away. And this is a response uh, similar to the response of, uh, of a parent to a child who is, who is beginning to be an adult. You give them more room. You give them a kind of independence. You, you step away. And the, the, the depth of confusion of that uh, adolescent or the young, uh, young adult is, is an extreme situation. And it's done... Uh, as by a loving father towards a child, this extremity of, of distancing. And what shall be the end of it all? How is it even possible? Then he reaches the decision that no one can help him except God himself. And this causes him to make a heartfelt demand of the Creator to open his eyes and his heart and to bring him nearer to eternal adhesion with God. This is what eventually happens. A true prayer uh, appears within the person that you can't fool the Creator. You can't say one thing and really desire another. This is the kind of prayer that is answered immediately because the Creator is the whole of reality and the force of development responds to those particular conditions that allow for development. That is, there must be something in the creature that allows a higher state to occur for them. And that higher state only happens as a result of a deepening need. 
So it says, it follows then that all the rejections that he had experienced had come from the Creator. That means that the rejections he experienced were not because he was at fault for not having the ability to overcome, but because these rejections are for those who truly want to draw nearer to God. And in order for such a person not to be satisfied with only a little, namely not to remain as a little child without knowledge, he receives help from above so that he won't be able to say, thank God he observes Torah and performs good deeds, and what else could he ask for? This action of the Creator, this rejection that was given to him, this doubt that entered him, was given to him by the Creator specifically so that he would not remain still, so that he wouldn't be satisfied with some sensation at a distance, some idea, some belief. In other words, that he wouldn't function as a child in reality. Oh, there is a God and he will take care of me and if I ask for something, maybe he'll change his attitude towards me and be nice to me and take away this situation. No, this is, this is the way that a child um, tries to deal with and manipulate a parent. But what is it that a child can do uh, to a parent that would change the quality of the love towards the child. Even in the natural world, in the physical world, the love of a, of a mother or a father to the child, it encompasses everything for the child. There's nothing that will change it. It's constant. So for the person not to remain this way would be not to be satisfied with this condition. That this force both of, uh, of drawing close and of pushing away is to evolve us into a spiritual adult. And only if that person has a true desire, he will receive help from above. So that's the condition. Only if a person has a true desire, of course there will be help from above. It's not that the Creator changed his attitude towards the person. It's that the person changed their need for the Creator. The, their desire, which is a vessel opened a place in which perception of the Creator can occur, so it does occur. It's a law. It happens. The answer to the prayer depends totally on the, the change in attitude within the creature. And he is constantly shown how his faults in his present state, that is, he is sent thoughts and views which work against his efforts. And this is in order for him to see that he is not one with the Lord. In other words, this contrast of feeling rejection and thoughts of doubt, they're not his. They are an action of the Creator on him while he is becoming uh, a spiritual adult, while, he, while he's growing. And specifically, the hiddenness comes from... Uh, must be experienced as doubt and must go against his efforts, no matter how broad or how good or how precise he may have been progressing up until that point. It must undermine all of that purposely. And, and that is so that he can see a contrast between where he is now in, in a particular state and what he needs to overcome above reason, where he needs to be next. Because to be satisfied, you think, oh, I'm one with the Lord, I'm fine, I had, an, I had this perception, I'm okay, I know everything now, I've got some kind of belief on this level. No, the Creator wants to create a creature and fill it totally with a bonding, with, with the light. It has to be unbounded. So we have to see how unlike the next level we are so that we build this need again to move towards that level. And as much as he overcomes, he always sees how he is found in a position farther from holiness than others who feel one with the Lord. But he, on the other hand, always has complaints and demands, and he cannot justify the behavior of the Creator and how he behaves towards him. And it pains him that he is not one with the Lord until he comes to feel that he has no part in holiness whatsoever. So, a person sees his situation change. He's not satisfied with the things that others around him are satisfied with. He comes to a point 
of complete preparation, that is, of complete doubt and complete despair. This is one of the things that occurs. And this is a preparation. Um, it's a despair of, towards the goal, not a despair against life, that life is not worthwhile, but that according to the goal that, that he has determined, his intention to bond with the Creator, he sees that it is completely beyond his capability that is the capability of his created nature and the will to receive and his actions, his intelligence. It can't be done that way. And although he is occasionally awakened from above, which momentarily revives him, but soon he falls into an abyss. However, this is what causes him to realize that only God can help and really draw him closer. So. Even the, the enlightenment, even the awakenings that he receives will not do the job. It must continue to the point where there is a complete need only for, for the Creator, only for the light. Uh, one has to really abandon this idea that there's something we can do with our actions in this world. No action by, by a person will do anything to advance this. Only the growing inner desire will change anything. A man must always try and cleave to the Creator, namely that all of his thoughts will be about him. And that is to say that even if he's in the worst state, from which there cannot be a greater descent, he should not leave his domain, namely think that there is another authority which prevents him from entering into holiness and which has the power to either benefit or harm. And that is the substance of doubt that there's some other reason for, for this occurring. Either it's me, or it is the world is conditioned in a certain way, my environment prevents me, that there is something other than the Creator doing all of these actions. That is, he must not think that there's a matter of the power of the other side, which does not allow a man to do good deeds and follow God's ways. But he should think that all is done by the Creator. The Baal Shem Tov said that he who says there is another power in the world, namely shells, is in a state of serving other gods, and that it's not necessarily the thought of heresy that is the sin, but if he thinks that there is another authority and a force apart from the Creator, by that he is committing a sin. that it's only the giving up of the goal of thinking that there is another power that draws a person away to, to make a decision that it is not only one force, it is not all the Creator. This distance is called sin. Furthermore, he who says that man has his own authority, meaning that he says that yesterday he himself did not want to follow God's ways, that too is considered to be committing the sin of heresy, meaning that he does not believe that only the Creator leads the world. All the thoughts that we have, all the feelings that we have, and all of the choices that we make based on those until we come to equivalence of form with the Creator, until we begin to sense spirituality, every single one of these things is placed in us. These are all actions of the Creator. Man has no authority in this, only his desire, only the growing of the vessel, specifically in a need for the light. This true prayer is the only action of man and the only thing necessary to ascend. We'll continue this article next time. Join us then. <laughs>